Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Petros Fore. In today's lesson, we are going to be talking about bearing. I know you have heard in most cases people talk about bearing and you probably have been wondering what is it? So first of all, we need to understand that bearing is measured in degrees. It's actually referring to an angle that is measured clockwise from the north. When you talk about bearing, it is important to understand that bearing is always represented in three figures. So when you have an angle like 30 degrees, such an angle could be, should be represented as 0, 30 degrees. Bearing is mostly used by ships when they are navigating or airplanes when they are flying. You have bearing also being used by explorers, mountain climbing and in different expeditions that they could be involved in. Now, let's talk about the compass. The compass is the instrument that you normally use for bearing. When ships are navigating or aircrafts are navigating, they do use the compass to know the actual positions. A compass basically always has the north, south, east and west. Remember, the east is always to your right, as indicated in this, and west always to your left. Never mix the two. Now, between the north and the east, we have the northeast. Please remember, I didn't say east-north, but I said northeast. That's how you must always be calling it. And we have the southeast, then southwest, and northwest. That's the way it is always represented. When the direction is on north, that is the 000 degrees. Remember I said, always you must represent it in three digits. So at east we have 090 degrees and 180 degrees, then 270 for west. So when you complete the revolution, that will give you 360 degrees. Now the Direction for northeast is 045 degrees, and we have 135 degrees for southeast, and 225 for southwest, and also 315 degrees for the northwest. Important key elements for bearing are always measure bearing from the north, and also bearing must be measured clockwise. So you position your north direction, and then you measure the bearing clockwise so bearings are always represented in three figures you should never forget these are important concepts which are tied with bearing anything else will be wrong right so we are going to have our first example here so the first thing that you have to understand is there is always the north direction being indicated on every map if you have a map the first thing is where is the north? When you know where the north is, then you can locate your directions. So what is the compass direction from Belfast to Omag? Now, you understand what is important is for us to know from Belfast. That is the key word in this statement. From Belfast. So when you say from Belfast, you locate yourself at Belfast. Then you draw a line that connects the two distances. So, from Belfast to Oman, you now need to know where is your north when you are at Belfast. They're going all the way. So, the compass direction is west. And remember, we have north, south, east, and west. So, for us to measure this angle now, what is the bearing from Belfast to Oman? So, we need to measure this angle. How do we do it? Remember, this is north and going all the way. If it is west from the previous slide, you can easily see that this is actually indicating an angle that is a reflex angle. And as you can see, it is 270 degrees. A protractor is the instrument that we use to measure bearing. It is important to know that some protractors are complete circles like what is shown here but there are some which are half which is a 180 degree protractor when you are having such a protractor what you have to do is perhaps to extend this line 
and you know this is already 180 then if you want to measure an angle in this direction you simply measure it and add to 180 then that will be your total now, let's look at the second example what is the rough compass direction from Omag to Newry so if you are at Omag to Newry so the key word as usual is from so we will draw our north from Omag. So we are going to connect these two places and immediately after connecting the two places, we have to indicate our north. After we have indicated our north, now we need to estimate the direction of Nyore. What do you think is this direction? Let's reveal. That's southeast. Good. If you have said southeast, well done. Now, what is the bearing from Omag to Nyore? Before you actually start measuring the bearing, it is important for you to take an estimate. When you look at this angle, it is evident that this angle is an obtuse angle because it's more than 100, um, it's more than 90, but less than 180. So let us measure it. An estimate will probably say perhaps 120 thereabout. But remember with bearing, we have to use our instruments. So we need to measure this angle to see what is its size. Let's bring on the compass. So when you put our compass, it is evident that this is 125 degrees. All right. Now, this third one says, what is the rough compass direction from Omag to Sligo? So the first thing is usual, you draw the lines to linking these cities after that you need to indicate where your north direction is from Omag this is where our north is now what direction is that I'll take a pause let's see what you come up with time to reveal that's southwest well done if you have said southwest now what is the bearing from Omag to Sligo. Now, when we are calculating this, we need to measure, and this is the angle we are looking at. Remember, we always start from the north, going all the way to the direction of Sligo. For us to find this, we need to measure. So we place our compass accordingly, and then we are supposed to measure in degrees. Remember, your compass starts at zero at north. And then you are going clockwise and that should have given you 245 degrees right now we are going to look at another different type of a uh, question here measure the bearing of B from A so remember you need to be looking at from A so bearing of B from A we position our compass at A and then we have to measure which one is the angle that we are looking at. So there is our north and this is the angle that we have to look at. What is the size of that angle? Look properly. It is evident. That's 0, 45 degrees. Remember always in three figures. Measure the bearing of A from B. So now we are now at B. We are going to start at north and going all the way around to where um, A direction is. So we are going to measure all this angle. This is the angle that we are going to be measuring, which is 225. Please take note. Since we have north there and north at point A, it simply means these lines are parallel. So you measured 0 0.45 degrees on this one. So using angles between parallel lines, you can actually tell that this will be 45 or so, this angle. So you simply can add 180 to get your 245 degrees because this angle and that one are alternate angles. Let's look at the second case. Measure the bearing of D from C. Right. In this case, measuring the bearing of D from C 
we position our source from C, and then this is the angle that we are looking at. So that is 145 degrees. Remember, it goes all the way up to this mark. All right. Now, the second part measuring C from D, this is the angle that we are supposed to be measuring. So if we are measuring that angle, it basically gives us the readings 345 degrees. Sometimes you might find it difficult to measure a massive angle like this. So an alternative that you can do is to measure this small angle here. Then simply subtract that from 360 degrees. Right. We have another question here. Measure the bearing from Banbury to Cartford. So Banbury to Cartford. I'm going to pause so that you can do all these four questions. Then we will reveal the answer. Please write your answers down and compare. Pause the video. It's time to reveal. Let's see what is the answer for the first one. That is 130. Well done if you got 130 degrees for the first one. And for the second one is 270 degrees and 238 degrees. Then finally, 59. Please remember this is not 59. It must be in three figure. So it must be 059 degrees. I deliberately left out the zero so that we can emphasize this important part. Right. This is another exercise that we are supposed to do. Measure the bearing of each of these indicated letters. So for you to measure, we need to put your canvas there. We place the canvas, I'll pause the video, please pause and then do your measurements. Once you have done your readings, we are going to reveal. It's time to reveal. So let's see. The first one will be 0, 50 degrees. That's for E. The other one for N is 310. Then 280, 220, and finally 290 degrees. Now, which letter on the bearing is on the bearing of 0, 72? So pause the video and fill in the missing gaps. It's time to reveal. M is located 0, 72 degrees. Then E is located on 0, 50 degrees. Then 320 degrees we have N. And at 245 degrees we do have T. Well done. So this is how we measure bearing. Remember bearing is used in navigation by different type of travelers. And it is very important. Now, to finish this lesson, we are going to look at this practical situation. A flight is uh, flying to Quebec and you have it shown in this diagram. Now, so the first path of this flight, it must fly all the way and then that's how it is supposed to go. But there is a situation. There is volcanic ash that's been showing on its path. So this flight is supposed to be diverted to Prince Edward Island. Obviously, flight controllers come in because they are supposed to be controlling all the flights which are in the skies. So as a result of the diversion, it is supposed now to turn and follow the direction to Prince Edward Island. Now, the question is, what is the new bearing? Now, two students answered the same question this way. And let's have a look and see who is correct among these two. I want you to analyze and see who among them is correct. The first one is clockwise from the plane to Prince Edward Island. I have measured the angle and it is 115 degrees. Okay, that's the first student. And the second one said, angle marked on the diagram and is 245 degrees. 
who among these students is correct? Right. If you said student B, I agree with you and well done. This is how bearing should be measured, clockwise direction always. And that angle is 245 degrees. Okay. That's how bearing is always measured when you are finding that direction always from the north in the clockwise direction. So student B got this right. Thank you so much for this wonderful day. It's always a pleasure having you on this channel. Please don't forget to subscribe and take care of yourselves. Have a pleasant day.